Hello everyone and welcome back to the 30 day biology study challenge. We're on day 13 cell cycle and we're going to keep moving forward. If you're just now joining us, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the days of the 30 day study challenge or any of my other study resources on this channel. We're going to do a little bit of content review and then some practice problems so you can really practice your active studying with us today. Let's get started. First, a little bit of vocabulary. Some students mix up chromosomes, chromatin, centromeres, sister chromatids, so we're gonna go over that right now. First of all, this is a very bad illustration of a chromosome, and it's kind of representing a misconception that a lot of students have about what chromosomes actually are. The DNA in a chromosome isn't actually just one strand with you know a couple dozen bases. In fact, it is millions of bases. Many chromosomes contain 50 million nucleotide base pairs, some even 300 million <laughs> nucleotide base pairs. So what we're seeing here is a very bad representation of a chromosome. Remember, chromosomes are DNA that are tightly condensed and packed, wound up around specific proteins called histones. So let's talk a little bit about that organization and then we'll get into the vocab. So if we have our DNA molecule, we know that in the middle it's connected with base pairs, there's a backbone. When it starts to be wound up, it is wound around these protein complexes that can unwind, to be transcribed or expressed. And when it prepares for cell division, it has to be very tightly wound into these structures called chromosomes. So that winding of the DNA around these proteins is gonna be very important for us to organize the DNA in a way that allows it to be distributed evenly into the daughter cells. So when it is in the nucleus and it's not going through mitosis, it's not wound compactly into chromosome forms, we call it chromatin. Chromatin is just that complex of DNA and protein. Sometimes it's shown here, you can see it kind of tiny, it's sort of this like spaghetti-like substance. Now, when it prepares for cell division, the DNA, and you can kind of see it here, will condense into those chromosomes. In humans, we have 46, so it'll condense into those 46 individual chromosomes. Remember, these are long, long strands of DNA that are being packed tightly together. And before it goes through mitosis as well, the DNA has to duplicate. So each chromosome actually has two identical sister chromatids. They're the same on each side. And in mitosis, those chromatids are gonna split apart. So let's talk about that vocab one more time. This whole thing is a chromosome, chromosome, and you can see the individual chromosomes in the nucleus, but when it's not condensed in the chromosomes, we call it chromatin, or just that bundle of DNA and proteins is chromatin. The chromosome is attached at the center by a centromere, so centromere, center. And then each side of the chromosome it has an identical sister chromatid. So one section here, that's one chromatid, and one section here, that's one chromatid. So one more time, chromosome, chromatid, centromere, and chroma tin here in the center. Okay, we're gonna be referencing these throughout today's reviews. I just wanna make sure you had them all straight. We wanna talk about the cell cycle, which is how a typical cell is gonna go through its life. Um, and so the main part of a cell's life cycle is called interphase, which involves stages G1, S, and G2. And that takes up the bulk of the cell's activities. So this interphase stage actually lasts a really long time. G1 is for growth, S is for synthesis of the DNA, so where the DNA is duplicated and G2 is also for growth and preparation for division. After the cell divides, it can continue going through the cycle again and again, um, as long as the right signals are being processed within the cell. If we zoom in and talk about mitosis and cytokinesis specifically, um, we're gonna look at the main stages of mitosis for how the cell is gonna divide its genetic information so that its daughter cells have the exact same stuff as the parent cell. We can remember the stages of mitosis as PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And if we look on here, prophase involves the DNA condensing, our nuclear membrane dissolving, and our chromosomes sort of migrating to the center of the cell. Metaphase is going to involve those chromosomes lining up in the middle of the cell along the cellular equator, and the spindle fibers are going to start to attach to the centromeres of the chromosomes. In anaphase, those chrom sister chromatids are pulled away, A for away, from each other, and those spindle fibers are going to pull them to opposite ends of the cell. In telophase, we start to get new nuclear membranes reforming, and then in cytokinesis, the cytoplasm is actually gonna split and we're gonna have a cleavage and we're gonna get two daughter cells. The DNA is decondensing and going back into chromatin. All right, so again, a couple of things to remember about mitosis. In a regular body cell, we're typically gonna go from a diploid cell with 
just the regular amount of chromosomes, which is represented by 2N, to two daughter cells that are also diploid. So in mitosis, we go from diploid to diploid. We go from one cell to two cells, and they have identical genetic information as the parent cell. So the point of this is to make two identical daughters. Now, the DNA has to be duplicated in S phase before it can undergo mitosis, or else if we split the DNA in half without duplication, we would end up with half the DNA in the daughter cells, which is not what we want in the process of mitosis. That's for meiosis, which we'll talk about later on. So S phase has to happen during interphase, this longer stage of the cell cycle, in order for the DNA to be duplicated and we can have enough in order to split it later down the road. Okay, so again, once we've duplicated that DNA in prophase, it's going to condense and get ready for cell division. Metaphase line up in the middle. Anaphase will pull apart. Telophase, we're going to get two new nuclear membranes starting to form. And then cytokinesis, we're going to get cleavage and we're going to cut those cells in half. Okay, let's talk about the cell cycle now and these checkpoints that are regulated throughout a cell's life cycle. The cell cycle has multiple checkpoints or control points where we have these stop and go signals that are gonna regulate how the cell cycle will continue. A lot of this is dependent on proteins and things called cyclins. And these cyclins are proteins that are gonna go up and down in different concentrations in the cell depending on which stage of the cell cycle it's in. They're gonna regulate various stages of the cell cycle through signal transduction pathways, which we talked about at an earlier day of our 30-day study challenge, by binding and activating different proteins called cyclin-dependent kinases, which have the ability to phosphorylate or add phosphate groups to other target proteins. So we have different cyclins and different cyclin-dependent kinase complexes that are going to regulate different stages of the cell cycle, and so they're going to go up and down at various checkpoints. Just a few of some of the important checkpoints in the cell cycle are our G1 checkpoint, which will allow it to go through S phase, DNA replication, G2, and then mitosis and divide. But if it doesn't get the go-ahead at that checkpoint, then it can enter a G0 phase, which is which is a non-dividing state that a lot of body cells end up in. Another one here the at the M phase is going to ensure that all the spindle fibers are properly attached to the centromeres of the chromosomes and they're all lined up in the right way. And if the cell passes that checkpoint, it receives the go-ahead signal, then it allows the cell to proceed into anaphase, separating those sister chromatids and pulling them to opposite ends of the cell. But if some of the fibers are not attached to the chromosomes in the right way, then the cell is going to receive a stop signal and it should not continue dividing. Let's take a look at another one, the G2 checkpoint. So we have the activation of MPF or mitosis promoting factor here. We're gonna have a gradual rise of cyclin levels during G2 here, and then cyclin B can bind to CDK1, and then our MPF complex becomes active, which triggers the onset of mitosis. And this only is gonna occur after the proper checks within the cell ensure that DNA replication is complete and that the cell is entirely ready for cell division. Now, cancer eludes a lot of these checkpoints. So if we have any signaling pathways that are not functioning properly within the cell, especially related to some of these checkpoints, that's when the cell is going to divide when it shouldn't. We could have unequal distribution of chromosomes. We could have cells that ignore signals for apoptosis or program cell death or ignoring that checkpoint during G1 to enter a non-dividing state. So remember that cancer is a loss of control of these checkpoints throughout the cell cycle. And usually that's because there's a malfunction in a gene that controls the proteins involved in these signaling pathways. A lot of cancer cells will continue dividing indefinitely in the lab if they're given all the nutrients they need because they can just bypass the checkpoints whenever they want and continue to divide and divide. Okay, it's practice time. We're not going to get too deep into the weeds with our CDKs and our checkpoints today, but it is an important topic if you're studying AP or college level biology. Remember, you can always pause me or mute me or slow this down if you want to go at these at your own pace. In flowering land plants, what is the primary purpose of mitosis? A, to generate gametes for sexual reproduction. B, to provide new cells for growth and development. C, to produce haploid daughter cells. Or D, to create pollen and ovules. Think about it. Correct answer is... B, to provide new cells for growth and development. All the other ones are kind of in reference to meiosis. So gametes for sexual reproduction usually are haploids. Again, that's answer C. And then pollen and ovules. These are also sex cells in the plant. In multicellular organisms, mitosis is there for growth and development. Flowering land plants are multicellular, so this is the most appropriate choice here. Some organisms do undergo mitosis in order to reproduce, just not the larger multicellular ones. In a cell, chromosomes line up at the equator, preparing for the two chromatids of each chromosome to be distributed to opposite ends of the cell. Which phase of mitosis is this? A, prophase, B, metaphase, C, anaphase, or D, telophase. Think about it. 
Correct answer is B, metaphase. Remember, they're not being pulled apart quite yet, so we're not at anaphase. We are lining up at the equator. Those sister chromatids are preparing to be distributed, so that is metaphase. A cheek cell goes through the cell cycle. After one complete round of the cycle, what are the products? A, one cell with half of the parent cell's DNA. B, one cell with an identical set of DNA. C, two cells with half the parent cell's DNA. Or D, two cells with identical sets of DNA. Think about it. Correct answer is... D, two cells with identical sets of DNA. Remember, cheek cells are gonna go through mitosis to grow. If we have a cut or an injury inside our mouth, we might be doing some repair as well. But after the parent cell divides, we'll have two cells, they will still be diploid, and they'll have identical sets of DNA. One more for today. A cell's spindle fibers do not attach properly, but the cell does not stop at the checkpoint and continues to move through the cell cycle. What could be a direct consequence of this scenario? A, unequal distribution of genetic material to daughter cells during cytokinesis. B, activation of apoptotic pathways to eliminate the damaged cell. C, entry into a prolonged G1 phase to allow spindle fiber correction. Or D, immediate progression to the next phase, G2, to bypass the spindle checkpoint. Think about it. Well, the most direct consequence is going to be A, unequal distribution of genetic material to daughter cells during cytokinesis. If it's bypassing that checkpoint, we're probably not going to get activation of apoptosis. We're not going to go back into G1 either to fix the spindle fibers. And the next phase is not G2. It would divide and then restart the cell cycle again. So correct answer is A. All right, that's it for day 13, cell cycle and mitosis. Tomorrow we're going to be getting into meiosis how we create haploid daughter cells. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out and I'll see you later.